Rudolph Valentino, the greatest of screen lovers, opposite the queen of movie sirens, Nita Naldi, in the 1922 hit, Blood and Sand. Silence, please. The great stars, the excitement, the thrills, the laughter, and the heartbreak of Hollywood's golden era. A small town arena in Spain, where young Spaniards meet for their national sport. Just as American kids team up for sandlot baseball. The look played by Rudolph Valentino. Valentino had been popular since appearing as the Sheik two years before but it was his sensitive work as Gagliardo in this 1922 film, Blood and Sand, that first brought him star billing. Chiripia, Gagliardo's best friend, takes a turn. With the cool courage of a dying Manolete, Chiripia tells Gagliardo not to be deterred from making the arena his career. The promising amateur becomes Spain's most idolized matador, and returning to his hometown, he sees for the first time in two years his childhood sweetheart, Carmen played by Lila Lee. The neighbors rush to tell Juan's mother he's home, and they paint for her a glowing picture of his latest triumph. Though proud now of Juan's fame, his mother still has misgivings over his having picked so hazardous a vocation. So too has Carmen. Carmen's father adds his congratulations. And it is apparent that there is nothing in the way of an early wedding. In celebration, Gagliardo appears at the local cafes. Valentino had started as a dancer, and he had made a hit with his tango in The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, his first major film. And so, with a scene like this, the Blood and Sand producers knew they were giving his fans what they wanted.
The one girl is Carmen, whom he weds a few days later. The Valentino dancing training showed not just in the graceful movement of his body, but in his expressive use of his hands. Carmen, shy, home-loving, wonders whether she can make the great Gallardo happy. The months pass, and now, in Madrid's Plaza de Toros, the great Gallardo entertains the presidential party and the aristocratic Doña Sol, played by Nita Naldi. prays he'll be safe. A serpent ring. Though quite accustomed to the admiration of beautiful women, Gallardo senses a special magnetism in this one. And after the fight, he accepts his manager's offer to introduce him to Doña Sol. Another bullfight. The combatants, Juan's young nephews. Carmen has given Juan no children of their own, but she has given him all her love, and she hopes the encouragement necessary to steady him in his dangerous profession. The exotic villa of Doña Sol. Doña Sol has pressed Gallardo's manager to bring Juan for a visit, and Juan, intrigued, complies. Artful as he has become in the ring, Juan is at heart still the socially awkward small town lad, drawn by the blandishments of a world he has never known.
Donya Sol has further prearranged with the manager that after dinner he withdraw discreetly. At home, Carmen reads. The beautiful Doña Sol returned to Seville last week. It is rumored that she no longer wears the famous ring which once belonged to Cleopatra. His flower. It was a gift from Carmen. Juan tells a friend he'll end the affair. That he'll go to the country and forget. But Juan can't resist saying goodbye to Doña Sol in person. And to do so, he attends one of her parties the night before he leaves.
Ensenada, Gallardo's country estate. As he and his party arrive, they find a strange limousine stalled near the gate. chance of completing repairs before morning. Chivalry demands that Gallardo be a reluctant Samaritan. In the morning, another visitor, Plumitas the bandit. Years before, Plumitas and Juan had met and ever since have followed each other's careers. Careers that are parallel in that both live by the sword and face death daily. To punish Gallardo for ending their affair, Doña Sol plans to humiliate him by being present when Carmen arrives with Juan's mother. Lumitas is played by Walter Long. To wound him further, she makes a confession. There had been nothing really the matter with her car the evening before. His two lives confront him, desire and pure love.
The last bullfight of the season takes place that afternoon, and Juan must be on hand. He knows the contest now is not so much with the bull as with his own conscience. Over the wrong, he knows he has done Carmen. Mitas, the most wanted man in Spain, risks appearing in public in order to give Juan encouragement. In the chapel below the arena, Carmen prays. Lumitas has been spotted by the police. If fate has indeed intertwined the careers of both men, Gallardo's time is up too. What matter now that the end has come to one man in dishonor and to the other in a cloak of glory? The next fight goes on as scheduled. The author, Vicente Ibanez, wrote Blood and Sand as an indictment of bullfighting. But it was also an indictment of predatory women. Like Juan Gallardo, Rudolf Valentino himself was to meet death at the height of his fame, just four years after Blood and Sand. <laughs>